What's up, everybody? Once again, my name is Ben, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. In the last episode, we talked with Sahashwa, and he told us to come to the Eastern Palace to warn his pupil, Asphala. Unfortunately, Asphala did not heed his warning, and he has gone inside the temple anyway, so in this episode, we're gonna follow suit after him. Anyways, guys, welcome to the Eastern Palace. This is the first temple of the game. I know, right? They just throw you directly into a temple. Isn't that just fantastic? Like, I love the pacing of this game. It is perfect in my opinion. It's not anything like Skyward Sword where there was like 90 minutes of tutorial and story content before they let you do anything. This game just throws you right into it and I absolutely love it. Now, those of you who are familiar with Link to the Past will actually recognize a few elements from that game in the temples in this game. Like, for instance, that ball puzzle, I believe, was a direct copy from A Link to the Past. Now, that's not to say that the temples are exactly the same. In fact, they're entirely different, and I think that's, like, the best way that they could have done this game. Like, take minuscule elements from A Link to the Past and bring them in A Link Between Worlds just to, like, feed off that nostalgia factor. And some of you might actually know this, but A Link to the Past was the very first Zelda game that I'd played, so yes, I do kind of hold that near and dear to me, so I might be a little bit biased when I say that uh, this game is probably one of the best Zelda games in a very long time. Anyways, inside this chest we got 20 rupees. Now, the Eastern Palace is a pretty basic temple. It's really not that long at all. In fact, we'll probably finish it up in this episode like this temple more or less just serves as teaching you guys the mechanics now over here use your sword to grab that blue rupee uh if you step on it the wall will jet out and push you back down to where all those balls are so you're not going to want to do that just uh trust me on that one anyways in this room guess what guys we have our very first puzzle we have to solve oh man i love starting new zelda games with new mechanics and stuff like that so Let's uh, quickly hit both of these switches and run over here and open up this chest that contains the small key that we need to access the second floor of this dungeon. But before we go up there, look at your map. By the way, there are no dungeon maps in this game either. But uh, down here, there's actually a hidden pseudo fairy fountain with some rupees and some fairies in it. Now, fairies in this game act a little bit differently than they do in most Zelda games. They act similar to fairies in A Link to the Past. They will revive you when you die. However, they only revive up to six hearts, I believe. So, honestly, they're really not that useful. There are better, you know, health restore items that you can get in this game than fairies. So, I really wouldn't recommend picking more than one up and just uh, save the rest of your bottles for potions and stuff like that. But we'll talk more about those a bit later on. Ooh, now that green little circular thing, that's actually a portal that'll take you back to the entrance of this temple. So, think of it like the teleportation pots in Wind Waker, or just a general temple checkpoint. They're actually placed really, really well in this game. Like, later on, if you fall in, like, one of the harder temples, chances are there will be one of those teleportation pads nearby, just because... This game is designed so well. Like, I'm really excited to get into the later temples with you guys. Oh, by the way, I didn't really explain it because I was kind of like rambling on and stuff like that. But, um, you're going to want to kill all the enemies in this room. All of the enemies are located uh, near all the pots. And as you saw, if you kill all the enemies, a chest will appear. Now, inside this chest, we've got monster guys. This is a unique item to this game. There are three different type of monster items. There are monster horns, monster tails... And monster guts right now. They're really not used for much. However later on we can use them to brew some of the potions That I was talking about so you're gonna want to collect them even though right now They are kind of useless to us and I am dumb. I forgot I need to ride this back up That way I can hit this switch and now I can go through the door to the right Screw you freaking Armos. I don't want to deal with you man oh, We've got some switches in the center of this room and apparently we've got some arrow traps so Let's uh, quickly hit all of these switches. If you're fast enough, you can pretty much hit all those three and then move to avoid the arrows in the fourth one without taking any damage. Anyways, a chest appeared, so let's open this bad boy up and get ourselves a small key. I'm pretty sure, yeah, after that chest appears, the arrow traps turn off, so this is a pretty basic room. I think it would be a lot harder if I didn't already know where the switches were and stuff like that. Like, I practiced this temple a lot beforehand, which is why I'm kind of just like 
running through here knowing exactly what to expect but anyways we're actually gonna backtrack a little bit to the room to the left of where we fought those uh four armos when we first came up here because you know we didn't go down this path now for the most part this path is kind of optional but i do want to get the treasure chest that is over here and gosh dang it i swear these balls have like the weirdest hitbox on them like I do my best to avoid them, but for whatever reason, I am like a magnet to these boulders. And oh, come on! I was nowhere, I was not even on the same tile as that boulder and just randomly runs into me. Like, I'm telling you, man, it's the programming. Uh, by the way, you can pan up with the D-pad and you'll notice that there's a switch over there. So, let's run over there quickly and activate it. And that causes this chest to appear. Now, inside this chest, we've got, guess what? More monster guts. Yes, I just went out of my way to acquire the dead corpse of a monster. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> uh, whatever. Alright, let's just exit down and go back into the room that we were in before we started all this backtracking nonsense. But whatever. Uh, you might have just like briefly noticed it, but there's a locked door to our left and that's actually where we're trying to go next. However, we need a moving platform to get up there. So, what you want to do is come over here. And, uh, activate this switch. By the way, that is the boss door. Uh, so yeah, we're like really, really close to finishing up this dungeon. In fact, the only thing that we're missing is the boss key itself. So, gee, I wonder what's gonna be in this room. Well, I mean, a bunch of Stalfos, but gee, there's a giant chest. I wonder what's inside that. Of course, it is going to be the boss key. Now, Stalfos are kind of annoying because, uh, for the most part... They will jump to avoid your attacks, however, if you corner them, you can kill them pretty easily, or alternatively, you could just, like, snipe them with your bow, which is also pretty dang easy. But anyways, now that all those guys are dead, let's grab ourselves the big key or the boss key. Honestly, I don't really care what you guys call it. It's either or for me. We know that from Wind Waker. Anyways, let's hit this switch. That way, we can actually activate that switch. Yes, there's a switch. That way, we can activate another switch. It's genius, right? No, like, I mean, perfect designs right there. Um, I believe we actually need to ride this all the way to the top to hit this. There we go. And that will open the way to the boss door. I didn't really explain it before, but, um, we couldn't actually open the door because we weren't even on the same level. But now, we are. So, let's head inside and take on the boss of the Eastern Palace. <laughs> oh, no, it's Yuga. And she's got Osphala, ha! After all your posing, all your preening, just look at you now! Now, my fine fellow, prepare to be made into my latest work of art! You'll have a privileged place in my collection of sages! You fiend! Stop it! Don't you dare hurt Osphala! No! Ha-ha! An excellent painting! What a knack I have for capturing the smallest details, just so! I'll make you pay for this, Yuga! Oh? Who? You're that wriggling worm I saw at the sanctuary! What? Have you come to challenge me again? I don't have time to coddle would-be heroes. But since you insist... I will oblige! Well, alright then. It looks like our first boss battle is gonna be against Yuga himself. So, obviously you're just gonna basically want to spam arrows at him. If you try and get close to him, I believe he'll just, uh, you know, attach himself to the wall and you won't be able to attack him that way. So, you just want to stand, um, perpendicular to him and shoot arrows at him. It's pretty basic, honestly. Already, we're on the second phase of this fight, which isn't much different than the first phase. You can pretty much always get two hits on him, as long as you have enough, uh, energy. You'll also notice that, uh, bosses in A Link Between Worlds, uh, start to glow red when they get low on health. So, you can use that as an indication. And, oh... We're actually already done. Well, that was quick. Enough of this. You're going to spoil everything. Well, that's kind of the plan, honestly. You forced my hand. I must brush you aside. Oh, no. Link. Well, I think we lost. We just got to turn into a painting. What are we going to do? What a sad, drab painting you make. You can rot there for all I care. <laughs> now onward, my collection requires even more perfect paintings. 
Oh, how I long to hang that exquisite Princess Zelda on my wall. Don't you touch the Princess Yuga. What are we going to do? We're just a drawing on the wall now. Oh, what's this? The bracelet that Ravio gave us. Could this thing really let us turn back into a human? Oh my gosh, we've done it. Ravio, you had this thing all along and you didn't even know about this? My gosh, I guess we owe Ravio an apology. And a big thank you as well. He just saved us. Ravio's bracelet saved you? But how? Anyways, it seems that you can now merge into walls. Well, isn't that just fancy? Uh, let's pick up this heart container. That way we now have four hearts. And well, there's no other exit, so let's try our new merge ability. Just click A when you're near a wall and bam, there you go. Like, you're freaking a painting. Just crawling along the wall. Like, how awesome is that? Like, that is one of the coolest mechanics they have added to Zelda in a very long time. Uh, that's an energy potion. That'll automatically refill your energy meter whenever you get it. They're actually placed very conveniently throughout, like, all the temples and junk, so just keep an eye out for them. Uh, you know what? I believe, actually, if we head back on this wall and go across again, there is a treasure chest on, uh, this side of the temple that we can get. And this contains a silver rupee. Now, obviously, the merge mechanic is the main gimmick of this game. However, I don't really like calling it a gimmick because it's just done so well. Like, you'd think the merge ability would get old after a while, right? Well, honestly, it doesn't. Like, it is just done so incredibly well. And the puzzles are just so well thought out that the merge ability feels like something that was always in Zelda. Like, it just fits so perfectly. Now, obviously, you probably noticed this, but, um... When you're merged onto a wall, your energy meter drains quickly. You also might have noticed that uh, right behind us over there, there's actually another platform. So let me wait for my energy meter. And we should be able to get over here now without a problem because there's a chest and inside it is another 50 rupees. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of chests in all the temples that contain rupees. And honestly, I would recommend going after them with how important rupees are in this game. But anyways, guess what guys? We are back at the entrance of this temple, but before we leave, there's actually one more hidden chest that we can pick up. And this one is another silver rupee. So yeah, you're going to want to get that one at least. That one and the other silver rupee are the ones that you should probably get no matter what. Anyways, we're pretty much done, so let's get out of here. Hey, it's Hashula. Oh, my lad, you finally found your way back out of the Eastern Palace. But what of Osphala? Unfortunately, Yuga got to him. No! Yuga has taken Osphalot too? I'm afraid so. Worse still, he now has two of our sages! And he also said he wanted to go after Princess Zelda. And that fiend said he was going after Princess Zelda next! We mustn't let that happen! I agree. Oh no! What's that? My word! What was that? I was just asking you that. Are we too late? Something dire is happening at Hyrule Castle! There's no time to waste! Alright then, I'm following you, old man. Oh no, what's this? What? What's going on here? It looks like some sort of magical barrier, dude. I wouldn't touch that. That was dumb. That barrier! I've never seen such magic! I daren't approach it! But we must break through somehow! Princess Zelda and Lady Impa are trapped inside the castle! Don't look at me. Listen well, Link. You must turn again to the Legend of Old for our solution. Alright then. These abominable events are an echo of what happened all those years ago. Then, when the castle was in the grip of evil, the hero of that day found the Master Sword. The hero first had to claim the three pendants of virtue to prove himself worthy of the blade. But there we are already thwarted, for one of those pendants is inside the castle with Princess Zelda. Well, actually, she kind of... Oh, what a quandary. We need her pendant, but there's no way to get it. Well, like I was trying to say, what... What's that? I can't be. You're wearing... That's the pendant of courage. Like I was trying to say, she gave it to me. What in Hyrule are you doing with it, Link? She gave it to you? 
a special charm. How right she was. She must have sensed the evil in Hyrule and the rise of a new hero to meet it. So it is you. It must be. Why else would the princess have given you the pendant of courage? She knew you would need to get the Master Sword. Well then, my young hero, you've got quite a quest ahead of you. You have to find the other two pendants. One pendant has been enshrined in the House of Gales, and the other pendant in the Tower of Hera. I will mark these spots on your map, Link. What? We got the pendant of courage? Good thing the princess thought ahead. Ah, clever girl, Zelda. But first, it seems prudent to save before taking up- Yeah, 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 shut up. I'm not gonna save right now. Jeez, get over it. I shall head home to search my library for clues to who the other seven sages of our day might be. That sounds like a good idea to me. So for now, it's all up to you, Link. Alright, thank you so much for your help, Sashwala. Well, guys, it looks like we need to get two more pendants of virtue. Get the Master Sword, and hopefully get inside Hyrule Castle before you can find Zelda. But, we'll do that in the next episode. So if you enjoyed this part, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But, once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.